A new mount from Skywatcher. This is interesting. About a year ago, I made a video here about the CQ350 Pro mount, which there was virtually no information on the inset at all and I made a quick video because I was looking for a new mount at the time and then nothing nothing came out about it well if you look on the global website we've got all of the normal products that we see but we don't have the new mount but if we go to the Skywatcher USA page we have the new mount here so let's click on there it looks as if this has been released or at least is about to be released it's going to be just shy of three thousand pounds at the moment and it looks very nice very much like the eq8 styling it's got the same color scheme as that with the lovely uh, green anodized controls there so it looks as if we've got some connections actually on the side of the saddle here and then we've got the lovely green anodized there as well. It says here it can take a massive 77 pound payload, which is huge. That's massive. Um, I would don't think I'd be able to lift this very comfortably. It looks as if it's because I struggle sometimes with my EQ6 and my AZ EQ6. And this one is substantially heavier by the looks of things. Reading some of the specifications listed here, they're calling it a observatory class equatorial go-to mount with built-in USB PC control. So basically it's got its own built-in USB socket. It's belt drives. Uh, it's got stepper motors, which they all have really. An S-NAP port eliminates the need for remote shutter release cable. Auto guide port, yeah, okay, it's the ST4 port. It looks like the saddle on this is able to take a wide variety of different uh, types of dovetails so that you can take a wide variety of different uh, telescopes. It says an optional illuminated polar scope, uh, which we've got on a few of the Skywatcher mounts, a DC power cord included and two 22 pound counterweights. It's looking very impressive. I'll just read this section to you because it's quite interesting. It says here, a convenient four times USB out port hub sits adjacent to three 2.1 millimeter central positive power out ports. So you can power stuff basically. It's got a USB hub and it's got a bunch of power outputs, which is good. Plus three out aux ports, three in aux ports. I'm not sure what those are. So Auxiliary ports, not sure what they're for. Uh, I'd like to see a kind of picture to identify what the connectors are. Um, AUX ports, so for auxiliary stuff, I'm not too sure what that's meaning. PC connect USB to serial port, so we already know it has a USB to serial converter built in now. A USB Type B in port, a SNAP SNAP port, one power input port, okay, that's the power for the mount. A hand controller port. Now, I like hand controllers. I think it's really important to be able to use a mount without a PC. Um, I know I don't use them very often, but when I do, I find them very useful. So I think it's important to have hand controllers. So that's good. An auto guider port. OK, ST4 port. So it's, you know, backwards compatible. Um, most people don't use auto guider ports. Uh, now they uh, they tend to use a control via the USB. But auto guider ports, again, that's important. A 12 volt DC power aircraft cable port for secure power connection to the mount. Right. Oh, OK. So that is the actual power. So it says one power input port earlier. OK, so it's got so it's got the usual power connections on this. And then they talk about the databases with the um, uh, the objects databases in there. This looks very interesting. I'm going to go into the specifications. One thing which I'm quite interested in is the weight. Shipping weight. This is the head box. So this is including packing. It's saying it's 24 kilos. 24 kilograms or 53 pounds in old money. And so that's with two 22 pound counterweights. So they are nine kilos. This is a very heavy mount but that's what you'd expect for this sort of uh, size about those different connections 
so we've got here those aux ports and it looks like these are an RJ10, an RJ12 and an RJ45 so that allows you I think to bring your connectivity through the mount itself um, which is very interesting so you won't have to have cables going on the outside of the mount so that helps with your cable management um, that's very interesting so if we look back at the actual mount itself there's a really good picture here you can see there's a cable what looks like a cable going through the middle and there's some connectivity here to the saddle on the side and if we rotate round again we can see there's connectivity on this side and the USB is there so the saddle connectivity there and then there's connectivity here so I imagine the cabling is going through there and then up into the saddle now the other interesting thing is it was talking about an illuminated polar scope I can't see from looking at this mount how you would look through the actual mount to do polar alignment uh, so if we go to say this one here normally your axis of rotation is clearly here and you'd have a polar scope somewhere there and it was talking about an illuminated polar scope but if we look at the rear of the mount here there's obviously no way visibly that you could look through or maybe that's some some how you look through or maybe there's a different method for looking through the polar scope which is interesting uh, so I'm not sure exactly how the polar scope will work but obviously you want to be looking through on this axis here to polar align um, maybe that's got some kind of camera in which you um, look through somehow um, but it said it's an illuminated polar scope so you actually would be looking through it maybe it's just not shown um, in this picture uh, but you can really see here the clutches that's the RA clutch there and that's the declination clutch there so very interesting let's have a quick spin through some of the pictures so we can clearly see here some of the ports and some ports on the front let's rotate it round a bit I quite like that design it looks really good so that's your latitude adjustment there I'm loving the green anodized finish it's really nice okay that's the back view right so you can see the RA and the deck controls and additional ports there very interesting so for three thousand pounds just the head and then if you go for the tripod as well which I suppose if you don't have a peer you inevitably would go for the tripod as well there we go so 3000 so it's 3527 with the tripod interesting times interesting mount so I can't wait to see these come into the UK I won't be buying one I can't possibly afford this and I have only bought a mount about a year ago I wouldn't have been able to afford it a three and a half gram mount no way um, when I can get my AZEQ6 for what was it it was sort of 1500 quid so yeah still brilliant nice to see a new mount coming out on the market.